book of Joshua chapter number 3, as I begin to think and ask God, what would... Now, I'm going to get back, Brother Jim, on those other V's that I was talking about last couple weeks on Wednesday night. But uh, I told Brother Mike, it, I believe in preaching to the occasion or preaching to the event or the situation. And I just asked God, what, you know, God, what should we do? What should we talk about? What should we even read? And this scripture, this thought keep coming in my mind. And I, did, I didn't even think about this until I was maybe walked in tonight. That the book of Joshua is about a book of new beginnings. It's about new beginnings. And I thought, wow, that's where we are. So I want you to listen, and I don't know how much, I'd like to read the whole chapter, but uh, man, I've done a lot of talking in the last couple of days, and my voice is, is a little bit weak, but I'm not going to make any excuse, but I'm going to talk about it. Let's go back into chapter 2 and look at the last two verses of chapter 2. You remember now that Joshua had sent the spies over into the land to look at it again. That had happened 40 years previously. And the men came back and said, wow, it's a great land. It's a land that flows with milk and honey. Man, this is, you ought to see what's over there. But they also said there are giants in that land. And we're no match for that. Joshua and Caleb said, God said it. It's ours. Right. And those ten people discouraged the hearts of the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel listened to those ten men instead of listening to Joshua and Caleb. And because of that, God said, you can just wander in the wilderness for 40 years until you die. And not nary one of them, that's West Virginia talk, not nary one of them made it into the promised land except for Joshua and Caleb. So Joshua is getting ready. They've wandered for, get this in your mind, they've wandered for 40 years They've seen their family die off. They've seen their friends die off. This is an unarmed, untrained, undisciplined group of people that's getting ready to cross over into the place that God said, it's yours, just walk over there and take it. Joshua sends these men out to spy again. Listen to the report this time when they came back. Verse number 22 of chapter 2. And they went and came unto the mountain. I'm on the wrong verse, 23. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Boy, I tell you, now I'll put a shout on you. Truly, the Lord hath delivered into our hands yeah. all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. Put yourself in Joshua's shoes. Joshua needed a word of encouragement. And those guys come back and said, Hey, just like... Am I too loud in here? Tell tell me, am I too loud in here? Hey, I I don't know how to temper it in here. So you tell me if it gets too much. Listen, truly, truly, God hath given us the land. Joshua was not going to make the mistake that they made 40 years ago. Right. Man, he was getting old. Brother Jim, we're getting old. We don't have time to stand on the bank of the river and look over on the other side. Every one of us, if we're going to cross over, now's the time to go. Because we don't have any time left. Just stand and wait anymore. Chapter 3, verse 1. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass that after three days that the officers went through the host. Now think about that. Get this picture in your mind. Somebody said it was about a two mile march from where they were camped up to the banks of the Jordan River. Can you imagine? (laughs) Brother James, no wonder we're glad you go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said it to me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Listen, Joshua was ready to go. Can you imagine? After 40 years of trouble and heartache and death, all of a sudden Joshua gets the word and says, Hey, get ready. We're moving out. 
And boy, I want to tell you, I, I've got a vivid imagination. I just have to believe that those people, man, I believe it was a time of shouting. I believe it was a time of excitement. I believe it was a time of joy. I believe those people said, hey, Brother Jerry, we've waited on this. We've longed for this day. We've waited for this day. And now the day has come. And God has said, hey, go. Yeah. And Joshua said, we're going. Amen. Verse number 3, And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall remove after. Then you shall remove from yourself your place and go after it. Man, when I think about that, listen, listen. <laughs> Unarmed, untrained, and here they stand, ready to go over into the promised land. I can't imagine but the joy that they had. And you know what? All they had. You know all they had to go over? They did not have weapons of war. They were not men of war. They were untrained people. Just a young campment of Israelites getting ready to go in. You know all they had was the Word of God. Yeah. yeah. And you know what all they needed? Yeah. Was the Word of God. Yeah. yeah. Well, they Hey, Brother Jim, there finally came a time when after all those years, God said, there are the people that will lead them out and take them into the promised land. And all they needed was the Word of God. And as those two spies said, hey, truly, the Lord hath given us this land. Let's go get it. Man, when I think about that, man, that ought to put a shout on you, man. They were willing, you know what? They were willing to move beyond their past. Yeah. You know what paralyzes us? Mm -hmm. right. The past. We think about the past and we, can't, we, we allow the past to hold us back. And we allow all these things to get in our way to hold us back. And we want to seek God and we want to go forward. I believe that every one of us that are here tonight, we want to cross the river. Yeah. And we want to get into the land of blessing. And we want to get where God wants us to get. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to ask you this question tonight. Here's my title. Let me preach it 10, 15 minutes. Here's my title. Will you cross yeah. your Jordan? Will you cross your Jordan? Let me ask it another way. Will we cross our Jordan? Yes. You said, what was the Jordan? It was an obstacle. And I tell you, I've been in this thing long enough to tell you, Brother Clarence, you've been in this thing. Brother James, Brother Jim. Hey, listen, Brother Mike. Hey, we've been in this thing. If you're going to do anything for God, guess what the devil wants to put up in your way? An obstacle. Because I'm going to tell you what an obstacle does. It stops most people dead in their tracks. Amen. And as soon people get saved, they get excited for the Lord. Hey, sleeping right on. Man, I love that, don't you? Hey, obstacles. People get saved and they get excited. And they say, man, I want to serve God. And you know, I believe people, I believe when you get saved, I think back about Brother Mike's testimony. He shared a little bit of it again with us the other night. But I'm going to tell you, as soon as you get saved, the devil's going to throw an obstacle in your way. He didn't let any obstacle get in his way. He did not let anything stop him. I mean, I want to tell you. Listen, when you think about that, I want to say to you again tonight. Go home and read your New Testament. See how many times you find the word church building. I'm going to tell you what the church is. Yeah. You're looking at the church. Yeah. You and I are the body of Christ. We make up the church. It's not in a building. We can hey, listen. We can go out there and meet outside, Brother Jerry. We can meet up at Uncle Sam's and Miss Helen's. We can go out there and meet on that canal. It doesn't matter where you go as long as you're together and you've got the Bible and you're doing what God wants. You are okay. Church is not a building. It's a body. And I'm going to tell you what's the body of. It's the body of Christ. Amen. And the Bible teaches us that Jesus Christ is the head. Yeah. I don't know about you, but your head is supposed to tell every other part of your body what to do. Yeah, man. The body doesn't tell the head what to do. Right. The head tells the body what to do. Yeah. And man, that's a, a, a body that's healthy grows and functions and moves on. And man, that's what I'm thinking about tonight as I look at us. Think about that. Philippians chapter number three. Anybody, somebody open their Bible up and give it to me so I can read. If you got big big words in it, it'd be a lot easier. Philippians chapter three. 
Brother Mike, isn't this where you read the other day? I thought it was. Brother Bill, I like the size of yours there. I don't know if I see it or not. Oh, I like this one right here. Can I have this a minute? Philippians chapter 3. I don't want to lose my spot there. Flip. That's got bigger words in it right there. I like big words. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3. I want to just read this to you. Brother Mike did so wonderfully on this other day. Listen to what Paul said. Paul was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Man, he was a member of the Sanhedrin. He had every, every title, everything that religion could give him. The Apostle Paul had it. When he was called Saul, I mean, he was their boy. He was the guy that stood. Man, when you think about that, when they were stoning Stephen, they hung his clothes and he held the clothes right. of those that stoned Stephen. Right. And buddy, God saved him. When God could have judged the world and said, hey, that's it. Right. Stephen said, looked up to heaven and said, Father, forgive them. Lay not this sin to their charge. Instead of God raining down judgment, you know what God did? God saved it. God saved the biggest sinner in the world yes. and turned him into Apostle Paul. Listen yes. to what Paul said. Amen. Verse number 7. But what things were gained to me, those I kind of lost for Christ. Yes. Amen. I'm going to tell you something tonight, Brother Mike. I'm ready to count everything lost Amen. to know Christ. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm willing to let anything go that I might know Christ. Yeah. I don't care about religion. Right. I don't care about buildings. I don't care about any of that stuff. All I care about is to know Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, boy, that's what Paul said, that I might know Him. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Yea, doubtless. And I, count, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and to count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know Him. Amen. He's talking as a Christian person. That I may know Him. I'm going to tell you what my desire is tonight, Brother Jim, is that I may know Him. I know Him in salvation. I want to know Him. I want to know Him more intimately. I want to know Him more closely. I want to know Him more dearly. Amen. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His... His what? Sufferings. Sufferings. That I may know Him in the fellowship of His sufferings, being made conformable, conformable unto His death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, yeah. forgetting those things yeah. which are behind, and, re and, 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 and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you. I'm going to tell you what, if the Apostle Paul could say that, I'm going to tell you what, you and I ought to be able to say that. But when you think about that, there's going to always be an obstacle. Now these folks had waited 40 years to get down through there. And as they traveled for that maybe two mile trip and they got to the Jordan, you ain't going to believe what they saw. You ain't going to believe what they saw. They didn't see a little tributary. They didn't see a little stream of water. They didn't even see that canal. You know what they saw? They saw the Jordan River overflowing its banks. Flooding. Listen, we grew up in the hollers of West Virginia. If you've never been around the creek flood or a river flood, you don't know what you've missed. But I'm going to tell you, it can wash everything out of the holler, it can take the houses out, it can do all kind of damage, and as soon as they got up there and could begin to see, right. yep. and you know what they must have thought? If they're like us, I'll tell you what they thought. Do you think God knows yeah. what He's doing? Amen. Yeah. Yeah, he does. 
Do you think God knows what He's doing? How in the world can we cross that river with those waves and those rolling torrents of water coming down through there, flooding its banks? How in the world can we do Surely God. Surely God, you made a mistake. Joshua! Maybe we're too early. Maybe we're too late. I don't know what happened, but you know what God did? God let him sit right there and look at that opposite. Right. And guess what he did? Guess how long they had to look at? Three days. God let him camp right there. Yep. And for three days they had to get up. And now listen, can, hey, I can remember the floods on Mudport coming out of that holler. I can remember the guy in Dock River flooding up. I can remember seeing those things. And I'm gonna tell you what. You can hear it. You can smell it. You can see it. I'm going to tell you to take everything with it. And I'm going to tell you for three days, they had to get up and look out of their tents and all they could see was an impassable place. Yeah. And I've got to imagine that the joy turned into something else around the campfire that night. And I can see those old boys as they sit around the campfire. They just kind of nudged each other and said, Hey, you think Joshua really knows what he's talking about? You think this is really God's plan? Do you think this is really the right time? Do you think this is really the right place? I, I don't know what happened. But I can't help but believe maybe some of them said, maybe we ought to go back. <laughs> no way. Maybe we ought to go back. Some of them might have said, maybe we ought to just stay here. Some of them said, we don't know what to do. This, that sounds like a whole lot of people that we're talking to. Amen. We just don't know what to do. I'm going to tell you what I found out. Trials can either make you better or they can make you bitter. Yes. You've got to decide what you're going to do with them. But I'm going to tell you what. Listen. Here's my question. Are you willing to cross the Jordan? You said that. You know what three days of sitting there looking at that water did? Their hearts had to melt and they had to say, there is no human way we can cross that Jordan River. And you know what? I don't know, but that may be what God wanted them to say. Because humanly speaking, they couldn't. But God said, hold on. Just trust and obey. Amen? So when you think about that, verse 15 told us that the Jordan was flooding their banks at that time. And man, I want to say, you know what I found out? God is the way maker when there is no way. Oh, yeah. When you think there is no way, I'm going to tell you what, I've been in this thing long enough. Listen, you come up to a storm or a trial or something and you think, how in the world am I going to get through it? I'm going to tell you how you get through it. Only by the grace of God. Amen. God can make a way when there is no way. God can give joy when there seems to be no joy. God can give happiness when there seems to be no happiness. God is able to bless when you think about that. So listen to what they did. They waited three days. And Joshua said, listen, when you see the ark of God move, go after it. I'll tell you what I decide. i tell you what brother could look and I decide. We're going to go with the Spirit of God. That ark. That Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of the presence of God's power and God's protection and God's provision. And I'm going to tell you, that box, Joshua said, God said, listen, when you see that box begin to move, you follow it. I'm going to ask you now, what are you going to follow? i tell you what I'm going to follow. I'm gonna follow. The, I'm gonna follow the Spirit of God. Amen. Yeah. I'm gonna follow. Hey, I'm gonna follow something, man, that I believe that God is in, and God has ordained, and God has blessed, and God has His hand on it. I do not know why. I do not have the answers. I cannot explain everything that happened. But that gone it. We're standing here tonight, looking at something that looks like we can't get through it, but we can by the grace Amen. of God. Amen. Man, I know what the devil puts in my mind. That's why I said I'd like to be with you every day. I like to be able to sit and hold hands and, and pray and, and hug each other and man, sing songs, man, and sing because he lives. And man, I'm so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. Man, when he starts saying, oh, man, I'm glad I'm a part of the family of God. Man, listen, you might be an outcast to a lot of folks. But you're not an outcast to Jesus. Amen. 
Man, I'm going to tell you what. The God we serve can make a way. He can make a way when there's no way. When there's no way, He can make a highway. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what. You can go on through. The real que- Listen, the real question for the children of Israel was this. And if this sounds familiar to you, maybe it is. The real question was, are we going to walk by faith or are we going to walk by sight? Right, right. And I'm going to tell you, if you walk by sight, you ain't going to make it very far in your Christian life. Right. Because the devil will put every obstacle, obstacle, he'll put everything in your way, he'll put every disappointment, every discouragement he can to stop you dead in your tracks. And you know what? Listen, he can't take your salvation, but I'll tell you what he can do. He can take the joy of your salvation. He can take that, man, I'm going to tell you what, and then you're rendered ineffective for God. I'm glad that God can take impossible situations and make them work. Jesus said the same thing in Luke chapter 18, verse 27. The things which are impossible with God are with an impossible man are possible with God. But I like what Brother Bill said. It's got to work. It's got to go. Listen, it's got to work. So tonight... We stand on this side, on our Jordan, and we look at the obstacles. We ought to choo choo right here. Well, just take off and take a run up there. Well, just choo choo right there through this camp out. And man, I'm telling you, man, just lay, you know why? They've got a head. In just a matter of days, we have a hey, new I had a guy call me last night and said, if you need song books, I've got song books I'll give you. I believe that God's going to take care of us. I believe that if we step out and we go by faith. And we don't go by sight. I believe God can take care of us. God can provide what we need. God can give to us what we need. God is God of all. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Obstacles are just opportunities for God. That's right. I don't have all the answers. I wish I, I wish I could tell you what all the answers are. Only I can tell you. Follow God. Step out by faith. Listen, let me give you a couple things. We're going to go. Bill, I'm not looking at the wrong clock. It's just about time to go right now. (laughs) Brother Bill told me, Brother Bill said, don't you look at that clock when you're preaching, man. I think, man, we got another hour or two to go. (laughs) Listen, let me tell you, let me give you a couple things we can learn. Number one, follow God. I believe God's always working. The problem is we're not always where God's working. We're not always in a position or a place to see God work. I'm going to tell you what, God's working. Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't, listen, <laughs> i got to tell you, it's a little discouraging. Miss Jean, it's a little disheartening. Uh, yeah, when I look at the human side of it, I think, dear Lord in heaven, I'm going to carry the stigma until the day I die that I pastor New Testament Baptist Church for about five or six weeks. It's got to be a record. I mean, it's got to be a record. And I'm going to go down in the annals of history and they're going to say, my goodness, what in the world was wrong with that guy? But you know what i got to do, Brother Jim? I've just got to hold my head. i just got to hold my head up. Yes, sir. I say, man, listen, there's some, th- there's some things that you just got to stand on. Yeah. There's some things that you just got to go with. I'm not going to leave you out in, the, out in the darkness. I'm not going to leave you on the side of the road. I'm not going to just leave you like an orphan. I will do my best to lead you by the will of God. Amen. That's all I can promise Amen. to give you. You're going to follow men's traditions. You're going to follow God. Amen. Jesus said, "You made, listen, He said, you made the Word of God in none effect. By your traditions. He told the religious folk, by the way. Yes. You've made the Word of God of none effect by tradition. Listen, I come out of a Baptist church. I grew up in a Baptist church. I've been in a Baptist church for just for now all my life. And I can tell you there are a lot of traditions in there. Traditions can be good or traditions can be bad. When traditions begin to equal the Word of God and they begin to hold the same authority as the Word of God, you're on dangerous ground. I'm going to follow God. Amen? They were following that ark. Let me tell you what was in that ark. That ark was called the Ark of the Covenant. When God told Moses, put that ark, build you an ark. And man, he built that box. 
And they put a couple things in there. He put the, the, the law of God in there. Right. Yeah. Those commandments, those ten commandments were down inside that box. By the way, everything in that box was a symbol of Jesus Christ. Yes, He's the bread of life. Yeah. He's the Word of God. He yeah. fulfilled everything in that yeah. law. Yeah. You and I could not keep that law. Inside that box was the Ten Commandments. God said, Moses, put those in there. There are the Ten Commandments. There's the law of God. Yeah. Yeah. Then He said, take your little pot. Remember when they didn't have anything to eat in the wilderness? God said, listen, if this is because there's no food in the desert. It doesn't mean anything. I'll rain it down from heaven. Yeah. He told yeah. Moses to get your little golden pot, put you some man in there, and stick it down in that pot. Because Jesus is the bread of life. Yeah. Man, He'll feed you in the wilderness. Man, listen, not He, Jesus said, this not like your fathers did even in the wilderness or dead. He said, I am that true bread of heaven. I am the bread of life. And then He said, take one more thing and put it in there. Man, when they were getting ready to decide about who was going to be the priest, yeah. and they took and they laid those sticks out. Aaron took a dead stick yeah, and laid it out. And that dead stick bloomed yeah. and blossomed, and the almonds came out upon it. That's the type of the resurrection yeah. of Jesus Christ yeah. who died and rose again. Everything in that box was Jesus leading them through. Yeah. And Joshua said, when you see that move, you... Go after it. Amen? Amen. Man, think about that. that you, know what, you know what that box was saying? What, what that was saying? Emmanuel. God with us. Amen. Jesus Christ. Emmanuel. God with us. What are you supposed to do when you face impossibilities? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Then look what he said, number two, and I'm going to quit here in about another 30 minutes. Number two. <laughs> And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Sanctify means to dedicate, to be hallowed, to be holy, to be set apart, to be separate. God was going to tell them, if you're going to cross the Jordan River, you've got to be holy. You've got to be set apart. We're not, listen, we're not going to cross with this sin. We're not going to take sin in. It's got to be left out. You've got to get rid of yourself. You've got to, do, you've got to just clean yourself up and get ready because God's going to do something among you. I'm going to tell you what I found out. When you get good and clean, Brother James, when you get the Holy Ghost, running inside of you when you don't have any open known sin in your life i'm not talking about being perfect i'm talking about doing your best to serve god yes. god will bless you amen 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 hallelujah this is what i tell him turn from your sin turn from your sin well that'd be a good message for a lot of church folks tonight wouldn't it it'd be a good message for a lot of churches tonight a lot of christians the reason we don't see a movement of God is because we've got too much sin. Yeah. God said, I'm going to do wonders yeah. among you, but I'm going to tell you what, if you want me to move, clean yourself up. Yeah. Get yourself straightened up. I'm going to tell you why churches are dead and dry as a cracker barrel. I'm going to tell you why you don't see any power of God. I'm going to tell you why you don't see anything happen. Because people are not living according to the Bible. Amen. You can't follow God and Satan. God's not going to bless over top of sin. God said be to get that stuff taken care of. And then he was telling them, be aware. Be spiritually aware of what God's doing. Put away these things that's going to hinder you. There are things every day that hinder us. They may not be sin, but they may be things that are weights right. that hinder us, that we need to get rid of. God's always working. We just got to get ourselves sanctified, separated, set apart. Declare ourselves, we want to be what God wants us to be. And you know what we'll see? We'll see God move. Then listen, verse point three, and I'm going to be done by another 30 minutes. Point number three. You got to step in and stand still. Amen. You got to step in and stand still. Verse number eight. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, Ye shall stand still in Jordan. Verse number 13. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest 
in the waters of Jordan. That the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above and they shall stand up on a heap. You know what God was saying? Hey, you, you, listen, it ain't going to happen unless you've got faith to step out. You can say, I've got it in my head. I've got it in my heart. I'm going to tell you what you need to get. You need to get in your feet. And you got to be willing to step out and go with God. You can say, I believe God. I trust God. I want to do this. I want to do that. But until you're willing to get up and move your feet, Yes, it ain't going to happen. We can sit here tonight. I'm going to tell you what. If people hadn't moved their feet from Sunday yeah. to tonight, yeah. right. people were willing to step out and stand still. Don't miss this. Man, listen, don't miss this. When you think about that, when you think about that for just a minute, step out. Remember that story I told you about about stepping up to the doors of the uh, Walmart store. Yeah. Remember what I told you? Yeah. I didn't know how true. I didn't know how true that was going to be. <laughs> Man, when you pull up on the Walmart store, those doors don't open up. In fact, Brother James, there have been times I thought I was going to go through them because they were not going to open up. But I'm going to tell you what, listen. Listen, when you get just to the exact spot and you keep going, you keep moving. I'm going to tell you what, when you get to the right spot and you get where that beam can find you and hit on you, I'm going to tell you those doors will open up and you can walk right on through. And that's what God told those Israelites. Hey, when you get up and you've got it in your heart, you've got it in your mind, you've got it in your soul, step into the water. Yeah. And those priests, here they come. Here they come. Yeah. Here they come. The ark of God. <laughs> we're facing nothing <laughs> we're facing nothing compared to what they faced and I don't know if they did like this stepping into a cold swimming pool or they just went up and just stepped right in I don't know what they did but I know some way, somehow, by an act of God, by their faith in the Word of God, they said, I believe God. And when they stepped into the waters, God said, hey, listen, just step in and stand still. I told you, we ain't going to fight. We ain't going to argue. We need to quit rehearsing. We quit, need to quit nursing. We need to quit cursing. We just need to step in and just stand still and watch God work. Yeah. That's all we need to do. There's no use to, hey listen, there's no use to keep rehearsing what happened. Right. No. I'm just about tired of hearing about it. Yeah. Pardon me. You ain't the only one. I'm just... <laughs> Listen, if it could have been fixed by my, it would have been fixed. Right. Right. There's no use to rehearse it. There's no use to nurse it and just keep on like it's some little child or some little baby. Don't keep nursing your problems. Right. Don't curse them. Pray for them. Amen. Love them. Pray God's best for them. But I'll tell you, listen, their feet had to get wet before anything happened. I'm willing. Amen. I'm willing. I put my feet in the water. I step out. I'll be numbered among you. But I'm gonna tell you when. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I tell you, that's what you call heaven, church. That's what you call having revival. That's what you call doing what God wants. If we're just willing to step out and just stand up and just step in the water, we don't have to do anything but be willing just to get in. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Brother Bill. Thank you, Brother Bill. Verse number 16 said the waters, the waters just stood on a heap. It said for ni about 19 miles back about 19 miles back god just raised that river up and it stood there and i gotta read this first to you let me get down there verse number 17 i'm gonna quit right here in about another 20 minutes and the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the lord stood firm he stood firm on dry on dry ground 
But I'm going to tell you, Brother Jerry, God can take a mud hole. He can take a mess. He can take the old muddy water, waters of Jordan and He can dry them up. Yeah. And I preach that. My voice is like <clears throat> I'm at the end of the sermon. Well, oh, I tell you, I love you. I, I can't tell how much I love you. I can't tell you what you mean to me. But I long to see God do a work. Yes, That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted six or seven or eight right. weeks ago. That's all I wanted. Yes, That's all I wanted is to see people saved and see people feel the power of God and see people rejoice and see people want to join up. That's all I wanted. So if I have to be the troublemaker for that, so be it. But I'm not the troublemaker. All I want to do is worship God. Yeah. Too old, Brother James, to fight. Yeah, I'm too old to argue. I'm too near crossing over. Yeah, I don't want any problems. I don't want any trouble. But guess what? They find me everywhere I go. Yeah. My wife said, why is it everywhere we go? Trouble just seems to find us. I'm going to tell you what. Yeah, Here's the answer to that. Yeah. Here. <laughs> when you stand on the Word of God, yeah, you're right. yeah. it is offensive. Uh -huh. It brings conviction. Absolutely. It troubles yeah. people. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what, they don't hardly even know what to do with it. Right. All I want to do, listen, I don't want to fight and argue. I just want to have church. Yeah. That's all I want. Yeah. And it's, it's, it seems like Seems like you want to go with me. So I'm going to ask you tonight. Brother Bill answered the question. You answered it. Will you cross your Jordan? I don't know what your Jordan is. I know what my Jordan is right now. I know exactly what my Jordan is. Brother Bill, you and I got the same Jordan that we're facing right now. Yours might be health. It might be finance. It might be trouble. It might be something else. I know what mine is. I'm going to the other side. Yes, yeah. Amen. Yes. Now we can now listen. There's another sermon we can preach. Some of them said we don't want to go. And they said, "Where are you going?" And God, God told them, said, "Most said, be sure you're sure to find yet. Amen. You gonna let your brothers go over there and fight, and you gonna stay over here and not fight?" And they said, "No, we'll go. We'll go." <laughs> Moses said, "If you don't go, you're sure to find yet." I'm gonna tell you what. I'm tired of living in the wilderness. I want to live yeah. for Jesus.